Hello folks and welcome to Starlight Dream Dolls, my first video under that name. For those who don't know, I was known as K's OOAK Factory just before. As I hinted in my last repaint video, today I'll be making a doll inspired by winter. I actually had that concept in mind for a little more than a year now. One would think this is a bit of the season because we are in April already, but... May I remind you that I am Canadian and only a few days ago we had what we call an ice storm. This is actually an event when we receive what we call freezing rain, which is a type of rain that doesn't occur everywhere, but it's super cold and it freezes absolutely everything it touches uh, when reaching the ground, so you can see here a few scary pictures of what it can look like. I reassure you, it was nowhere near this bad, but uh, big portions of uh, the Montreal area got uh, stuck without power for a long time. I remember in 1998, uh, parts of Canada and the uh, northeastern part of the US got hit with a pretty big one, and yeah, it was a pretty significant life event. So yeah, I thought interesting to mention it because this doll today is pretty much looking like she could be the embodiment of a nice storm. So starting up, I chose for this custom to use a Laguna Blue Monster Idol, and I am just starting to prep her for the transformation that's lying ahead. This is a second hand doll, so she will need a good washing and all before she can be used. I start by removing her hair, cutting it as short as I can before I will be disconnecting her head from her body. She had a lot of sticky and disgusting glue inside, so it was quite an adventure. To disconnect the head from the body, I am using boiling hot water that I've put here into a mug, and I'm just having her soak for a few minutes. And then I took her out, used a towel not to burn myself, and I just yanked the head off. Just please also be careful to not knock your camera over like I almost did. Then I am using tweezers and I stuck them in the neck hole and going to just scrape the plugs of hair from the inside of the doll. And this was quite hard because there was a lot of glue and it was hard and sticky. I decided to spare myself the pain and torment of trying to pull it out from the neck hole and I just opened the head and uh, well, <laughs> you'll see why I had trouble. This, 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 this was a lot and I already had to eat the, the head back up a few times just to scrape the hair plug, so yeah, that, that's a lot and it's a little disgusting. And now to deal with that big hole that I just made, I decided to sew it back shut because it's a little more sturdy than uh, it would be with only super glue. And after that, I went in to clean all the factory paint off the doll's head using acetone. I am using heavy duty nail polish remover, but you could also get some pure acetone from renovation stores, I think. Next, I took a bit of time to just remove some of the webbing and fins that are on Laguna's arms. It was sadly a little bit of a waste of time because I ended up misplacing her arms and well, grabbing some from another doll in the end. But, you know, you can see how I do it. I also took a moment to scrape off some of the seam lines to make sure they were a bit flatter. After all that prep was done, I started with the face-up, my favorite part. As always, before starting the face, I primed the doll's head with a few layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant and I sketched the general shape that I wanted for the eyes and the lips. Then I started applying some basic shading to the face using chalk pastels or soft pastels and a makeup brush. This is not as pigmented as it's going to be because the sealant only lets me uh, work in layers. So ultimately, there's a lot of repetitions of colors on a bit more layers that I make it uh, seem like. While adding all these colors of blushing, I am also adding uh, more to blend and build up gradually. And I am using a pastel pencil by Derwent to also apply some white that I then blend just to sculpt her face. 
As for the pencils that I am using, these are watercolor pencils and it's very important that they are because these are water-based as opposed to oil-based, which are regular colored pencils. So basically, as I keep going on building the colors and adding more pigment, every time I feel like it stops applying as pigmented or opaque as I want, I add another coat of sealant and let it dry. This, this allows me to keep building and it also makes the surface a bit more uh, paper-like. It, it makes the pigment stick, both uh, the powders and the pencils. A good use of sealant is very important to make this kind of face-up because this is Basically, it's, it's a magic ingredient. So the sealant I use is often nailed as the holy grail of sealant. It's notoriously hard to use and hard to find. So if you ever have any questions about that, just sign off in the comments below I'll help her and help the best I can. As for my way of going about it, I start with lighter colors that are usually uh, easier to shape and erase, and I slowly build my way up to more intense, darker, and brighter pigments. And then when I'm happy with the base that I made with the pastels and the pencils, I switch to paint, which is probably the step that takes me the longest time. I am using an assortment of uh, various type of brushes, mainly nail hard brushes and watercolor brushes, and the paints I use are watercolors and gouache. I tend to want to experiment a lot with textures and shapes these days, so I'm doing a few things, trying out a few things, just as I see fit and how I'm feeling it at the moment. The scariest part for me is always the lashes, so sometimes I erase a lot of them, sometimes I make guides, and well, sometimes I just, I guess I wing it. And well, this time it didn't go as planned, I think I went a little bit overboard and hid a bit of the beautiful shadows that I build around the eyes, but ultimately I liked it and it, I don't know, I feel like the shapes look a bit like a butterfly and it's fantasy and artsy and I'm really living for exaggerated lashes these days. Also I guess one of the perks of using water soluble paint for this step is that I can take a bigger brush with just water on it and just shape and wipe away some little details that I don't like and clean up around the things that I do. And I finish the job with some shimmers dusting some mica powder on the face. I sealed her with a few more coats at the end, glossed her lips, and this is what she looks like. To make her hair today, I'll be using these four colors of acrylic yarn, and I'll show you how I am going to prepare the hair for the doll. The first thing I do is that I separate all the little strands of the yarn pieces. Then I gently pull on them and let them just separate. And I do that over and over again until it starts becoming really, really fine. This is a nice trick and as opposed to the technique uh, that involves brushing, you have uh, less loss of fibers. I also find it pretty nice to, when you try to make longer doll hair. I made a few custom blends while uh, preparing the hair for this doll and the way I blend them together is just the same. I pull them together and over and over again until I'm satisfied with how uh, blended they are. And this is a strand that has been flat ironed. You see the difference. It's becoming really shiny and silky. I am using an hair straightener to flat iron them. So they all look all beautiful and shiny. And I've made a little bit of wefts here, just using some Mod Podge, just to help me having a bit more of control when I'm, I'm applying the hair to the head. I am a very impatient person, ADHD be damned, but this is, this is really, really, really helpful to have a bit more of a control of where you want the hair to be, especially when, when you have, like with this girl, like multiple, multiple shades. I had more blue layers, I had more pink layers, some white and some gray, and I wanted the effect to be uh, more controlled, I wanted one side to look more blue, one side to look a bit more pink, and the top to be a bit more gray and white. To have a nice result, you also want to apply the wefts at the back of the head, at the bottoms, and start going up gradually in a spiral motion if you can. And if you want to part and if you want bangs, you need to plan this out at first because it's going to be a bit more complicated to add that later on. To create a very clean part, you need to put some of the wefts backward. You 
glue them on the opposite side and then you flip and fold them. It's important that you keep some very thick and large wefts for the ends, just to make sure that you won't see the, the color of the scalp poking through. I always forget to do it, but if you want to make sure, you can also paint the scalp the color of the hair. In case it does pull through, it will look more seamless, more full. Yarn hair is also easy to crease and shape, and this is why I covered it in kitchen plastic. It just makes it flatter. You let it sit for a few hours and it looks better. And then I used <laughs> I used the eyebrow razor to start just cutting her hair to make it the way I wanted to. The hairstyle that I had in mind was very asymmetric, showing off the colors. And the bangs are going to be a little bit blunt, a little bit more um, pronounced. I'm separating the hair with some kitchen plastic and holding it with needles just to help me uh, separate things and keep everything orderly. And this is more or less the thinner chair style I was going for, but I did some uh, slight retouching off camera. I also did put the kitchen plastic on it uh, one more time just to make sure it was going to lay as flat as I could have it. My plan for the dress going in was to start with a white base and cover it with some moss, which I think could give me a really good texture that is reminiscent of frost. This is natural moss and it's a bit springy, so the best way that I found to work with it was to uh, flatten it <laughs> I flatten it and glue it down using some coats of Mod Podge, which is really becoming my favorite thing ever, so I'm just using whatever round that I can get my hands on to try to flatten it as much as possible. When I am happy with what I have, I start gluing it directly on the doll and I am, yes, using uh, some of the Mod Podge to also fuse the skirt of the dress on the doll. I did end up changing the white fabric that I used though somewhere along the line because this one was just not doing anything for me. It looked really bad and it was a bit transparent, so yeah, you can see it here. It's a much silkier fabric. Gluing the moss exactly what I wanted to get a lot of coats of uh, Mod Podge that I often diluted with water and some needles to help it lay flat. I was about to start to add some colors onto it with some paint, but then I realized that it would be probably best to blush her shoulders then before I start going with everything just in case I damage something. So yeah, I'm just protecting the skirt of the dress with paper towels and uh, masking tape. After a bit of work with sealant and pastel, this is the result, and this is pretty much what I had in mind. So I can then start going uh, for the painting of the dress, and I have a lot of uh, pigments that are metallic, and a lot of mica powders, and some gems, and other paints, and various stuff that I was, well, trying to use to try to make something that would look appealing and didn't really have a plan. So I went on around with it. To make the metallic pigments, uh, well, with the, the mica powders, to make it in a bit of a paint, I uh, mixed the color that I wanted and I've added a bit of Mod Podge and some water. It makes a very uh, translucent kind of paint and it makes sure that the mica powder doesn't rub off. I am not too careful with this wash of colors and the, the ones after it because I purposely wanted it to creep a bit, like um, to uh, have some just a little bit on the the dress itself on on the skirt on the fabric just so like you see the frost it's it's kind of like creeping its way up the dress it's part of the dress i made it off camera but i also made her a crown just to test if i liked some of the of the little jewels that i would end up gluing just to see if they fit it with the style of it all and the colors that i picked Though before I added that, I decided to just add some highlights to some parts of the texture and just add a little bit of white lines going on the skin and parts of the fabric that was colored just to give a little bit more uh, texture-wise. And then I used my favorite Mod Podge again to add some gems and some chunky glitter, just adding a bit of color variations with some purple, a bit of pink, and trying to do a shave on the dress that would be interesting for the eyes to follow. So this is more or less the result. 
Though I did add just a tiny bit more details off camera as I go because I wasn't satisfied. On her arms I decided that she was going to wear gloves so I added a bit of moss for texture on the hands and I made cylinders of fabric to mimic gloves. I found that unicorn horn in my things and decided to use it as an earring because it was, well, pretty fit. I also wanted to use some full fur to make her a long wintery coat. Well, I'm not really equipped to uh, cut uh, full fur like it should be, but so uh, to try to minimize damage on the fibers itself, I just gently separated the fabric by uh, slowly going at it with my artist's knife from the back. It's a really decent quality, uh, nice soft full fur that I received from a friend and I was very happy to find a way to use it finally. I wanted to line the inside with something nice without adding too much bulk, so I decided to go with small layers of some lace that I had on hand. I very carefully stitched them by hand, trying to make my, uh, my stitches as small and invisible as possible. To give the cave a bit of more of a, of a structure around the collar, I decided to add a metal wire and to hide it and make sure it doesn't pop anywhere, I um, wrapped it in a little bit of a white satin ribbon. And this is what it looks like with the lace all on the doll with the collar and everything. It clips nicely, it holds and it's pliable so we can open and close it. And I will say here before I forget that I used a little bit of that same uh, full fur fabric on the gloves just to get them a bit more detailing but for some reason I completely forgot to film it. And here you also see that I've ended up adding a lot more details to the cape, mainly long strips of chiffon that I distressed myself using an eyebrow razor and a little bit of that chunky glitter and a lot of ribbons because I, I actually really do love like dangling details like that on my dolls. If a few months ago you would have told me that I would make shoes from scratch confidently on the doll tutorial, I would have laughed in your face, but this is exactly what I'm doing right now. For some reason, my brain doesn't seem to be able to comprehend how to make and work with shoe patterns like most people do, so here's my way of, uh, well, cheating myself a way to do shoes on my own. So the first thing I do is I add a little bit of masking tape here just to uh, hold some uh, soles for the shoes that I made out of cardboard on the feet. It's just to give me a base for the shape and uh, make sure that nothing sticks to the feet, though the clay that I'm using is absolutely not going to stick to the plastic. So yeah, I'm using, uh, this is child-friendly foam clay. It doesn't smooth as much as I wish it to be. It doesn't take too long to dry. It's very smooshy, very lightweight, and very easy to tear and cut. So yeah, it's, it's a good base. It's uh, a little bit uh, finicky because, again, I cannot, even when fresh, I mean, I cannot get it as smooth as I would want it to be, but it's still giving me a nice way of building a base shape uh, very quickly and in a way that is vulnerable and flexible. So yeah, good base. The base that I made were pretty big and I ended up cutting a lot out of it to make more like uh, smaller shoes, like stilettos, not, not really boots, but at the time that I covered the feet, I wasn't sure yet what style of shoes I wanted to go for, so yeah, I guess a little bit of a waste. Then to start building a bit more strength and structure and make sure that it wasn't too flimsy, I made another set of soles in still the same kind of cardboard paper and I glued them uh, with some Mod Podge. Mod Podge is literally doing anything for me this day. So here are the shoes after I trimmed them. I really did take my time to make sure that I would trim them even, that they matched. And I even used uh, a pencil to mark take my time with the scissors and the artist knife and then I added the eels. The eels are just a bit of cardboard covered in masking tape and I added it with hot glue. I did try to use hot glue to smooth out and build a bit more of the shape of the heel but it was a mistake because this was 
even harder to perfectly smooth than the clay was and I try sanding it, I try gently going at it with the, my artist knife, but I can only go, could go this far, so maybe next time I'll just glue the heels and then add a bit more clay, work in layers, just until I get something that I like. After I was done with that, I did give the shoes a base coat of color, of paint, and I started gluing fabric on top of it. This is just to make sure that they're gonna have a nice texture, a nice feel when we touch them, but also it will make them look smoother overall. When I did shoes with this technique the first times, I used faux leather and it worked like a charm, so if you have that, you can also try that. This is really, really a nice technique in my opinion, but again, I'm pretty sure there are better ways to make shoes that other brains could understand more than mine. I added a bit more details with some strips of clay and a bit of lace and I gave them a last coat of paint and a bit of a metallic sheen with more of that mix with mica powder and this is the finished shoes. Then I decided to start working well on a doll stand for her because with the way I made her skirt, even if I tried at the beginning to fight it, it I made it so she can't really sit, her hips are pretty locked in place, if you force it you're probably gonna damage the dress, so since she cannot sit on the doll shelf, I decided that she needed her own stand. So I took one and I customized it. Usually I don't really do uh, custom stands or give stands with my dolls, and this is only because I actually don't own many of them, and until I do, I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna give some away unless it's it's a really special project, which this one is. After giving it a lot of texture with various materials I had on hand, I repainted the stand to fit with the doll with all those metallic sheens and gradients of color and I really like how it turned out. At first when I designed the doll I had the headpiece poking down, but I decided that I liked it poking up instead, so here, you see how it looks. And all that's left for me to do now is to put the, the doll back together, the whole thing, put the head back, her cape, everything, and we're gonna be able to look at the end result. So this, this is my lady, the winter. She is very delicate and very detailed, and overall I am extremely proud of her. I personally hate the cold with a passion, but I see a lot of beauty in the winter landscapes, so I wanted to capture that on a doll. One funny thing about me, which is ironic because I'm Canadian, is that I live with a condition called cold urticaria, so it's basically that I'm allergic to cold. It's a little strange, but it's very easy to manage and, well, it makes me not want to go out as often in the winter, but yeah, I can appreciate the can appreciate the beauty of winter from afar at least. And with all of that said and done, I have an announcement to make. I am finally, finally opening a coffee shop. And along with this shop, I'm launching my first product ever, which is going to be true prints of uh, paintings that I made. These are watercolor prints, they are made on good quality poster paper, and they are limited edition. They are small, only 5x7, and you can buy them as a pair or individually. And if you're interested in the originals, you can also contact me and inquire about that. So you can now find me on Kofi at Starlight Dream Dolls, all in one together with no spaces. And if you want, you can buy me a coffee or a pledge a small amounts, and this is going to directly help me and my livelihood. I also have a page on Facebook, and even if I often forget to post things on my feed, I am one click away and always checking what I received in my inbox. I am also on Instagram, and this is probably where I am most active, but all three platforms are where it is easier to reach me directly. I will also put uh, some of the dolls that I want to sell eventually on coffee and also in my highlights on Instagram, probably on Facebook too if I don't forget. So if you want to acquire one of mine, just stay put and look at my social media pages. And of course you can also leave me a comment on any of those platforms and I try to read all my DMs and read all my comments and respond to most or at least like them. So if there's anything, just 
Just let me know and I'll make sure to get back to you to it. Do not forget though that those two prints are limited edition and I'm going to probably have some more merch in the future. I'm taking bookmarks, stickers, maybe more prints, smaller or bigger. We'll, well, we'll see. We know. Let, let me know what you want. Let me know what you're interested in. And with all of that said, that's enough for me for today. I wish you all an amazing weekend. But of course, as always, please stay safe.